Howdy, Beefalo Bart here, and welcome. Alright, multiplayer replication. It is nearly enough to make you want to pull your hair out and run headlong into a wall about seven, eight times. You would think that they, um, you know, Epic would work on something that would actually just make life a little bit easier. So, I've got three examples in here of replicated items and I'll show you in single and then in double player and then we'll take or double player we'll look at in double player idiot um yeah we'll look at it in multiplayer and then uh we'll actually look at what it takes to do it so the first one is just a simple shuffle dance animating um or replicating an animation so you know the other one is to have like a particle effect whenever something happens you get an explosion and there you go well the other one kind of goes with the dancing if you're going to dance you got to make it rain so there you go <laughs> i was trying to sort through and work through some issues and still learning um a lot about uh, multiplayer replication but it is it's enough to to really yeah We'll leave it at that. So, I'm going to go ahead and add another player start in here, just because I like to have more than one. And, that's just, it's a bad size. Uh, how about now? Alright, so, now when I hit play, I can spawn from either of those two. That's no big deal. Go in here, and I'm going to change this to go into a new editor window so get some fresh pie and on the left side of the monitor we will have our server okay so that are the server it's really mostly annoying whenever I'm doing this um, because I have to resize the window every time because whenever I'm not streaming and I'm doing this I actually have one of these views on a different monitor and it's no problem to me but it's only a problem whenever I actually stream so alright so server and there was some major issue there it just didn't want to cooperate but yeah okay this is our server on the left he's all happy and stuff now let's go over here to our client so you can see this is a client we can walk around as the client and I just want to get them both close to each other Okay, so when the server does the event, we'll say it starts dancing. No problem. He's doing his thing. The client can see it. The server can see it. That's great. So let's start the um, the client here. The client now, he's doing it, and both the client and the server can see it. That's great. So let's let the client make it rain. And let's let the server make it rain. And then we'll just kick off a uh, explosion on the server and explosion on the client. So it works. You can't jump, can't do anything while you're dancing. So there you go. So it all works. Now, here are the thing. It just seems so counterintuitive to have to put so much effort into actually doing something like this. So if we go in here to my blueprints and go to my player base, okay, I'm going to try to not to zoom in on the two, ex uh, three example items that I've already got. We'll come back to those in just a moment. But if you're doing something in single player, and I'm just going to go in here and get close to these guys, and then we'll come back to them. All right. So to make something work in single player. Let's do keyboard four. So on keyboard four we want to play an event. Oh, I don't know. Let's um spawn emitter. Emitters seem to be a little bit weirder than doing other stuff like animations. So let's say we just grab in here a booster flame. That sounds good. Um, I have no idea what it is but let's go ahead and we want to get a location for it 
So let's go ahead and grab a reference to our mesh. Let's get world location. And since it's more than likely going to be like a exhaust flame or something like that, I want to go ahead and raise it up just a little bit. So I'm just going to do a vector plus vector. Now if you're just spawning like an explosion at their feet or whatever, that's different. But then I can drag the location into here. And let's just elevate it up by 50. Just to get it off to the ground. All right, so if you're trying to do that with... Um, a single player, and that's all you're worried about. A single player, then yeah, okay, no problem. Let's go back to one selected viewport. Now, when I hit four, we spawn it. It's spawning where we, we told it to go to. If we want it to be attached to, um, say, his butt cheeks, and you're running around and you hit it, it spawns. So, let's actually, you know, with that, if you're trying to spawn it attached spawn emitter attached and from here your attached point name attached component um, attach it to the mesh we'll do the booster flame and we'll get a socket and we'll get the socket from our skeleton which is our mesh SK polygon and we want pelvis. If you have trouble spelling things, you can always um, copy selected bone names, go back in there and paste. And there it is. So we got it onto the um the pelvis. That's good, whatever. So let's try that. So now if we come in here, you have four. Yay! But the rotation's off. That's not really important on that. We are spawning the emitter. And for the sake of it, that looks a little bit wonky. So let's get smoke. Um, yeah, we'll just go down. So that's, a, that's it. That's all you have to do for single player. But what fun is... You know, well, okay. What fun is it playing with yourself all the time? So, you know, yeah. See, it's just going to spawn and it's going to stay on there continuously. That one looks kind of like crap, but whatever. Yeah, we'll do that. So, if you want to make this work in multiplayer, I know that this is not going to work. So, we're steaming now. Really bad gas problem. If I were to go in here and run this in multiplayer, and you break it down, and I find this the, the best way to do this is to actually break it down when you're trying to learn replication, is just break things down. You can see both of them are on here. I'm on the client. If I hit it, the client's doing it, but the server does not see it. So this is my server. I walk over here. The server does not see the guy doing it. But let's see what happens when the server does it. Server can see himself doing it, but they can't see each other doing what we're doing here. So what you end up having to do is uh, essentially go around your butthole to get your elbow. So we want to use this. We want to use spawning meta and attached, but this is not going to work. We can't just plug the input in there because, well, things can't see things. So in the example here, and I'm going to if I show you the example of like the money flying through the air this is probably going to confuse you just as much as as anything so the actual custom event that I make to actually make this work instead of just off the key press and just saying everything work what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a um, custom event and it's going to be multicast so if I come back over here I can do that. I can do custom event, and we're going to call this gas problem. So, again, I want to make that multicast. Now, this is not going to fix the problem. This is not going to make it work just by doing the multicast. Because, well, 
you know, I could go in there and show you and it's just going to be broken. Because it's executing it as a multicast item. Let's, you know, let's just show it. Alright, so these guys can see each other. Hit the number 4 key. When I hit it, nothing happens because I don't have it bound to the key yet. So, I just ran this to um, gas problem. So now when I press the number 4 key, I'm going to call that multicast event. So, again, I'm going to take the client over here so they can see each other. I hit it. Well, the server doesn't see the client doing it. And the client can see both. So I'm on the server. I can see me doing the gas problem. But if I come back over here to the client, the client can see both. It's working great for the client, but not for the server. It's a little bit on the stupid side. So, you know, you've got to go through and go to the next step. Since it's working for the client both ways, but not the server. You would think it'd be the other way around. So with that, we hit the number four key. We're calling this multicast event. So the next step will be to go ahead and do a custom event. And this one will be the client calls gas. Okay. And the client calling gas is then going to refer to gas problem, which is this guy. So we now have to move this down here. This actually needs to be run on server. So now I'm going to drag this. Well, this can actually stay here. See, this is where it starts getting confusing. Like with the example, I'm calling the um, the multicast event is actually doing all the stuff that we want to do. So then when we go to the client, we want to now call that feature. So we're going to take this one and move it down here to the client cause that gas problem and then make it even more fun we're still not there yet so we need another custom event and we're going to call this one server calls gas now that um, the server is going to call it we need to make sure that we have the appropriate authority no Cartman references here so switch has authority And then you can call this guy. So client calls gas. Now we can use this one and plug it in up here and server calls gas. So it's now letting the client call it, the server's calling it. And then the, the server is saying, okay, you can do it whenever you press this button. It seems just off a little bit. And you really got to wrap your head around things to get that in, in ingrained. So hit it, and absolutely nothing happens. Because I'm being stupid here and need to make sure that I hit run on server. So, it kind of helps. We're running um, um, particle effects. It was not working um, in any other normal fashion. This was the only way that I could get um, spawning emitters to actually work. So the client is working, the server sees it, the server can initiate it, and they both see it. So it worked perfectly, right? That was the only way that I could actually get these um, particle effects to work. I tried every other combination that I've used on other stuff, and like running events, and you know, whether we're, you know, with any particle effect. This was the only way that I could get the particle effects to appropriately replicate. Yeah, I did try it, and it, it did not um, 
it didn't it didn't work whenever I was in my other project where shooting explosions and so forth when I'm mixing lots of other events going on it was just not uh, working and like I said the exploding um, um, gas uh, like drum would work perfectly fine but whenever I do the same thing and same effect in the car the car wouldn't work correctly because it wasn't there was an issue with calling the um, the actual particle effects well I mean I'll, I'll try it but I mean this way I actually got it to actually work here so um, with running it this way it was a pain in the ass but you know off of the multicast event it would show up for the server but not the client or it would show up for the client and not the server and I tried every combination of mixing these guys around and the problem that I found was it, it was the the actual particles themselves the, the particle effects or or spawning items because spawning can only be done on the server and just a, a regular multicast wasn't doing it and the other ways that I was trying it before we just wasn't doing it so doing this um, I directly call that Because even the the client calling the multicast, it wasn't working correctly. Um, I'll um, I can let's see this. Running the the client as the multicast, it didn't actually work. So it's right here. This is my my client call. If I run that as multicast, and then from here this essentially if I run the client from the call here and run client client calling the the key press is now calling the client multicast and whatever it's compiled into other stuff you see with that the server cannot see the client doing the effect there's the client and the server doesn't see it it just it didn't work that way um, so that's why going about it this way right here worked um, Yeah, the client always goes to the um, the client points back to here, and it was actually run on server instead of uh, multicast. Yeah, with that that shooter project, I, I, there was just weird issues where certain things would replicate correctly, certain things would not. Um, I don't need that extra client call there. Um, and it was just absolutely just breaking my mind into little pieces because, well, this way works. And it's accomplishing the same thing, and I can pack it all into a neat little function if I needed to. And, um, yeah, I... I I give the actual event its own custom event. What's up, bud? And with the actual thing having its own custom event there, um, it's still, it doesn't really matter all that much, but by running it this way, the multicast event here is the actual item being multicast. This is what's getting cast out. And the client running this one right here this is just a run on server and it's an intermediate it's picking up this to here and then this goes to here and so that's run on server that's run on server that's multicasting the event and 
that's actually just calling the the whole process to start and it works 100% of the time whereas um, trying to use less steps involved like skipping um, this one and just going and using this as the multicast being called as as the the client and running it right here <laughs> I promise you, this is this is a good system. It works for me. It works 100% of the time, and it's helped me to solve problems that were coming up from the applications that I was using it in. And I kind of go with what works, and utilizing this system here coming over here, like I said, number one key the dance one this was um doing the animation it wasn't as problematic as doing the other ones so same thing here if i bring the server server can start doing the same thing server can call an explosion client here can call the explosion he can make money come down he can make it rain the server can make it rain this works 100% of the time and I have haven't had any issues doing it this way I've tried plugging uh, things in different locations and run on server and multicast in different locations and for particle effects for particle effects it has to be done like this or else yeah I was just throwing different particle effects in here just for you know doing the the call events because part of, you know, screwing around with, um, let me just do a save all, um, setting up things for, we'll grab here the, um, this is the client, client can run in here, and then we'll grab the server and do the same thing. server can come up here and join in on all the fun here and so look back here from the client view so yeah that's where I was running into issues was uh, getting everything appropriately working and Hey, this is what I do. Is I sit here and I... Oh, I stopped dancing. I don't to do that. We need a little fog on the screen, so, you know, on the stage, so... But it was running into all kinds of little issues with the, the replication of, in specific, the, um... the particle effects. Because I would... I would hit to, to start dancing, and this was no problem. Doing animation was not a big deal. Um, but whenever it came to do an explosion uh, or calling money to rain down or spawning a uh, smoke emitter or whatever else, the consistency issue was, you know, because I don't care about the gas, gas one, I'll just delete that one. Um, this was the, for the money, all I did was I got the mesh and use it for the world location did a, a plus 150 so it would be a, right there above his head but running the multicast event here and going through that whole process it seems like a lot but it works and it was the only way that I could actually do it to get it to work correctly with the particle effects doing other things like um, uh, let's see the dance I probably could have abbreviated this a little bit more, but what you end up with is, is it looks like a lot, but it's start dancing and stop dancing. For this case, it's um, I hit the number one key and running a flip flop, which start dancing, stop dancing, and then I ran the um, the actual what happens when you want to tell it to start or stop dancing. This is to start dancing getting your character movement, setting it to none, so you can't run around while you're 
you know you're in that animation you're setting can dance to true and that's it you're just running this event it's not even replicated so honestly that could have been done off of the client I could have just put these two down here and then they could have been the client thing but the reason why I broke it down was I wanted to I was showing this to somebody else and in a private session and I wanted to make sure that it was very evident of how you're gonna call these events and and what you would actually put in would be the server part where you're doing server start dance switch of authority client start dance so technically I could have used these custom events I could have not made them and just started right here with client start dance which is a run on server so for the animations you said you can skip the the initial so kind of to follow what I'm saying here is instead of creating this you can actually just start with telling the client to do something and this will be what you're telling it to do getting the animation to work in the animation blueprint was just about as easy if you go into your animation blueprint and all I did was I input the um, I, I cast to the player and said can you dance well if the answer is yes then set dance to a variable that I created in here called dance one and if you can dance according to your player base then it enables that and then you go into this I've shown this before and how to do this and you transition to get into it as you are dancing and not dancing and you just plug the animation in right there it's very simple so I didn't change anything why do you need me to save it so like I said the way I did this one these two right here I can just delete those completely and then that would get rid of these two and actually bring the client down and plug them into here so client start dancing is run on server and it would it could then call these three events right here the the three pieces here so you can go from client start dancing then set your variable to can dance and then character movement and so just we just drag these three items actually we just drag these two and delete it and delete this and delete this and then go right from the client and that's what John was saying in a little while ago was just start from the client but I don't know why I broke it down this way I was just trying to explain it to somebody of how it's going to work down the road but I said I can break this all apart and say replace these two I can drag this down to here and actually put the client event here and here instead of having the client event actually call these two this was an unnecessary step so all then I would have is the actual set the variable and stop your movement would have been here and then you would have had the server event and then you call it from your your actual event caller your event caller would be like pressing the one key or um, in a death sequence or whatever so the way John was saying it that that work will work it works perfectly so I mean if I I mean I could break it and show you but you know that's the way he was saying it and that works it works great for for dancing and for well not just for dancing but for animation calls I mean if I came up with um, I'll grab a third person jump loop is the example that I usually use here and I'm gonna go ahead and copy it over here into a temp folder I'm gonna rename that to glide just to have a different animation so that's all it's gonna do in the animation without actually importing anything special so to set it up this way so that you're just setting up an animation you could actually just do um, glide or say can glide 
and replicate this just to replicate it right there so you want that variable replicated and then you can do custom event client can't spell client um, can glide or let's instead of can let's call it so we know what it is start so we want to start our, our gliding here and then all we're going to do with that is just say set can glide to true and to go along with what we we did up here we'll get a reference to our character movement and we will set movement mode to none so that it'll stop us from walking well no we don't need to do that screw all that but you could do that if that's what you want to do is is stop your character movement that's the way that I would do it I'm not worried about stopping it right now so again this is a um, this is pulling it in from a animation perspective all we're doing here is we're gonna get this client start thing and we can run that on server and then server oh shit, custom event and server start glide and just remember to get in the habit of doing shit in the right place switch as authority and from authority client start glide so you're cutting out a lot of steps that I, I did in the in the above version so we're gonna go back to using the number four key because I, I deleted that number four key but um, so we got that the client call the server call and then when we actually call the event to start working I'm just going to use keyboard for again and actually just call the server start glide. So I'm going to call the server start event right there. But quickly, just need to go into our animation blueprint and come in here and in our event graph we've already got this where server can do this so I had a sequence no because I had some other call events going on but I'm just gonna break that back and just to keep it clean and neat and right we're gonna go ahead and sequence here so we can split off in this portion of it and not interfere with what I've already got so we need to actually create another temporary variable which we're going to call glide ah, it's called glide or whatever so from here we actually need to get um, can glide and we need to run the branch This one may not be as neat and pretty as normal, but because all my blueprints are pretty. So we get a reference to um, can glide, and if it's true, then we'll do that. We'll say yes, we can, and no, we can't. So if it's true, yes, we can glide. If it's false, no, we can't glide. And then go back into the anim graph. And I'm just going to come in here, and from idle run, I want to be able to add a state, glide, go into it, and I'm going to take my glide animation, connect two little guys together, go back to default, and to get from idle run to my glide animation, I just want to get that reference. And then to get back from gliding to idle run, I want to 
do the same thing, but use a dot boolean, connect that into there, compost, and save. So now we just have a run on server, run on server, and a call event. But does that work? So if we hit number four key, we're doing that glide. So now we can glide around the map. Really dumb animation, but will it work in multiplayer? So here's the client. Client hit the number four key and he's doing it and the server sees it. So let's go over here to the server and there we go. So you can abbreviate it and, and do it like what, what John was saying there was um, you don't need as many things. And for that, you don't need as many things if you're doing for an animation. You, because you have right here a replicated variable that you're throwing into the mix. That works. This works perfectly fine. And that's all we needed. This, like I said, I overcomplicated things and just to make it, eh, whatever. But this is much shorter and does exactly the same thing and works perfectly for an, setting up an animation. And that's all I needed was just the actual client telling the uh, is saying hey I want to be able to glide and server start glide switch as authority call the client version and now when I hit the number four key it calls this which is this which then allows this and then yeah it seems counterintuitive to have to go through so much but it's not really that complicated once you start breaking it down well, it's still complicated to me because I haven't had enough coffee yet. But that's it. That's all you need for an animation call. But trying to do the same system like that for an actual emitter is why it wasn't working. And that these are examples of what I had to do to get an emitter to work. And this was only for spawning emitters. And I would imagine this would also kind of fit in the same basic principle of spawning a projectile or um, spawning uh, any other actor you know, spawn actor from class um, because I had problems with spawning any emitters this led me to go through the whole process of trying to get the puzzle pieces together as like I said the um, a simple thing like an animation easier to do because there's less steps, you can just do it. If you kind of ignore the number four key, that would be like if you set up a sequence to happen, like whenever you, your character dies. Well, they go through the animation of doing the death animation. This is all you need to do to call that death animation to make it replicate appropriately. You would just plug in server start glide wherever you wanted to call the animation for your, your character to die. It's going to go through the rest of your puzzle pieces to actually get it to work. Now I want you to think that I, I, I'm I'm trying to contradict what John was saying. John is fucking brilliant. He absolutely is brilliant. He knows shit on, on replication that makes my head spin. But um, I've had to go through because of problems with my other project of things not working correctly in replication. Like the, the car that I did in the other video where you shoot the car and it turns into a different um, skin and then whenever it explodes, that particle effect of that explosion, I could not reliably get it to replicate no matter what I did. So I actually had to come in here and just do dumb things like this of making it rain. So doing the emitter where the money is, is showering over my head and um, calling smoke or an explosion or whatever. These are what I had to go through just for that. And I'm God, F-18s are flying by again. Whenever they fly over, they get all kind of stupid. We had an F-22 that was doing its thing a while back. Then we had some hot shot with a damn F-15 come in that kept wanting to break the damn sound barrier. So we had like 10 sonic booms within a three-day period, which rattles the freaking house. 
Um, yeah. But yeah, that that's what I had to do to get just for the emitter was had to go around my butthole to get to my elbow on this and separating the multicast from the run on server and I, I could probably keep screwing with it and maybe abbreviate a little bit more but I know this works and if I want to make sure that I'm 100% functional then I'm just going to use this method but like I said for animations you can actually abbreviate it far more and yeah, where the hell was it right there that's all you, I had to do for making an animation work was this small amount here but this was kind of like for the over glorified version that I was using in, in a, um, a private session where I was like okay this is what it looks like for multiplayer and this is all the nodes you need for a single player so but all right, I want, to keep, I want to keep this one short, and this has already gone longer than I wanted to go on. I actually covered what I needed to cover in the first 20 minutes or so. Uh, setting up a emitter to properly replicate. And that's the steps that I had to go through to get an, an emitter to uh, you know, work correctly in replication. And so doing animations, far easier. Some things replicate far easier. It's just that, you know, like with an animation, I've got a um, an actual variable that I can pull that's replicated, but, yeah, not with the emitter. For some reason, emitters just don't want to cooperate properly with um, multiplayer replication. So I'll be doing other videos later on. As I'm learning more and streamlining the, the methods of multiplayer replication, I'll be sharing more of it, but is it this was just a weird thing that I had to run through just for the emitters and I did another private session with someone last night doing the same thing because he was having the same problems with his uh, emitters not properly replicating but today's task is actually going through and checking the sound replication because I want to ensure that if you know the client fires a weapon the server can hear it or if the, the server fires up and the client can hear it and the current system that I have in my current shooter demo is not working the way that I want it to same thing with doing oddly a teleport system of getting in and out of the tower that I had in, the, in that, that demo using the exact same method or I thought I was with the hotel demo where you can just go in and out of rooms but doing this exact same thing and the exact same steps isn't working and the only difference between the hotel one is you're standing in front of a door you're teleporting from outside the door to inside a remote room and then when you leave the room you, you're teleporting back to the hallway where you left from well in the tower system you walk up to the base of the tower where the ladder is because I didn't want to take the time to set up a, um, a separate movement mode and other junk. I mean, it would be better to set up the climbing me you know, the mechanism. I don't have the animations to throw in there right now. So what I did was you walk over to the base of the tower and you overlap a, a, a box collision. There's an arrow component that's actually in, in the very top set to the location where I want you to teleport to. So whenever you go up to the, uh, the box collision, you hit E and it teleports you into the, the the tower into the appropriate location and then you turn around you walk into another collision box and it will let you teleport to the bottom so there's an arrow at the bottom an arrow at the top um, box collision at the bottom and a box at the top so that you have two enter boxes where you can actually hit the E key to interact with the item and doing the same system it worked great in, in one project and now it's not working in another so, yeah. All right, guys, I'm going to run. i got to go do some cooking, and uh, it's, well, way past lunchtime. It's 3 o'clock now. I usually try to get lunch prepared and started before noon, and, yeah, I've been dealing with phone fiasco problems. But I will say, in defense of straight talk, getting into um, configuring the new phone, which I did get all three phones showed up at one time, and I picked the cheapest one and sent the other two back and yeah it turns out the cheaper phone was because 
Dum Dum screwed up the um, the address, and, and even though he put the shipping address on the package to go to North Charleston, Kentucky, um, I live in North Charleston, South Carolina, and it still managed to find me at the same time as the other two packages. So I kept the one that was cheaper, and I sent back the, the two more expensive ones, and I'll get refunds back on them. So I'll keep everybody in touch on what's going on with that crapola. But the phone is here. It is here. It's already activated. I've already had one text message on it already. Um, I just finished that a little while ago. But, yeah. All right, we'll see you guys later, and I will be doing some more streaming later. Uh, I'm going to be fiddling around with this project that I'm in right now. Uh, working on some other stuff. I, I've got one thing that I want to try to work out and try to figure out. Uh, actually, two things. And one of them is um, trying to get either... And I could do this with a regular MP4 video, but I'm still trying to figure out how to get a YouTube live stream and YouTube videos into a scene with sound attenuation. I can get them into my map, no problem, for at least for our YouTube video. I can play it, no problem, but I need it to have sound attenuation, and yeah, using experimental stuff from UE4, hell, they don't want to update the shit that, that, that should be working anyway, much less their experimental stuff. So, yeah, I'll stream again on that problem later. All right, guys and gals, I'm going to get out of here. So, check in with me. That oh, wild crap. I didn't mean to do it as two there. I was trying to get back set to do one and select a viewport. But yeah, get back with me later and um, we'll continue on with this stuff and with more of the replication stuff and try to work into the, the other two problems that I've got and see if I can get those worked out. Alright guys, take care and we'll see you later.